I'm Christelle from Diabetes Strong, and these are my top 10 Dexcom tips. So each of these tips could easily have their own video dedicated to them, and some of those videos I've already made. So when relevant, you'll see a link to that video up top, and you can click on that, check it out if you want to learn more. But in this video, I want to keep it a little bit more high level so that nobody gets bored. And that way you can also just, you know, choose to do a deep dive into whatever tips catch your attention. Okay, let's go. So these are my top 10 tips for optimizing your Dexcom experience based on my own experience using the Dexcom T5 and now T6. And my first tip is to not trust your Dexcom 100% of the time, but trust your gut and confirm with finger sticks. Reason for this is that your Dexcom can be inaccurate and especially during those first 24 hours that you wear it. It doesn't mean that it will be, but it can. So if you feel low or high, even though your Dexcom is telling you that you're perfectly in range, I would definitely confirm with a finger stick. And if you do find that your Dexcom is significantly inaccurate, it might be worth considering doing a calibration. So the rule of thumb is that if your blood sugar is stable, and the sensor is consistently reading more than 20 milligrams per deciliter off, it might be worth doing a calibration. And my second tip is to learn how to use the Dexcom trend arrows. So when you look at either your receiver or the app on your phone, you'll see a blood sugar, it's in a circle, and attached to that is an arrow, and that arrow will indicate how your blood sugars are moving. So are they going up or down and how fast? And this information can be super helpful if you wanna become more proactive in your diabetes management. So two arrows, either upwards or downwards, indicates that your blood sugars could, not that they will, but that they could either increase or decrease more than 90 milligrams per deciliter, so that's five millimole per liter, in the next 30 minutes. Whereas one arrow up or down indicates that your blood sugars, again, could, not would, but could, increase or decrease up to 90 milligrams per deciliter. Again, that's five millimole per liter in the next 30 minutes. And then we have one arrow slightly, slightly outwards or slightly downwards. And that could indicate that your blood sugars might, again, that, not that they would, but that they might increase or decrease 30 to 60 milligrams per deciliter in the next 30 minutes. And that I believe is, 1.7 to 3.3 millimole per liters. Yes, just check my notes. 1.7 to 3.3. And then we have this straight arrow, which we would think just means that your blood sugars are stable, but not quite, there's more to the story. So if you see that straight arrow, it could mean that your blood sugar is stable, but it could also mean that your blood sugars will increase or decrease more than one milligram per deciliter, so that's 0.05 millimole per liter a minute, right? So that could mean a 30 milligram per deciliter increase over the next 30 minutes. Because of that, I don't just look at the arrow, I also look at so the trajectory of the actual blood sugars. So if my blood sugars, are, if I can see them visually on my receiver trending upwards with that straight line, I have a good idea that it's probably increasing by that one milligram per deciliter a minute, okay? Again, this is for me, this is how I view things. So the way I think about it is I'm okay with, let's say a blood sugar 130 milligrams per deciliter, I won't necessarily correct that, but that could mean that next half hour I could be at 160. I'm not okay with that and I would do a correction. So for me, I include all of those factors into whether or not I make a proactive correction. That being said, my third Dexcom tip is to not chase your blood sugars. So if you see a arrow pointing upwards, even two upwards, downwards to the side, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to react. There's so much more to blood sugar management than just what you see on your Dexcom. Let's say for example, that you just ate and now you're seeing one or two arrows going upwards on your Dexcom. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need more insulin. It could just mean that you didn't completely nail the insulin and food timing. Remember, insulin needs a bit of time to work. So if you actually have the right amount of insulin on board, it just hasn't peaked yet, but the food has, and you add more insulin to it, you might go low later, and now you're just on the blood sugar roller coaster. Or let's say that your blood sugar is trending downwards. Okay, let's just pause. You know, 
What else is going on? Did you just move around? Did you just exercise? Did you clean the house, run around with the kids? Or maybe you injected rapid acting insulin, so that's your mealtime insulin, and it's working at its maximum, which is about an hour, an hour and a half after injecting. So I think it's important to just pause and you know consider how high is the likelihood of actually having a low blood sugar before you start treating it. If your blood sugar is low, of course, treat it. We don't want to run around with low blood sugars. But in my experience, you know, being in the 100 plus milligrams per deciliter, so let's say the 120, seeing two arrows down and then starting to treat that with glucose is just a recipe for high blood sugar. What I do in a situation like that is I'll measure my blood sugars using a finger stick. Because again, Dexcom is about 10 minutes behind what's actually going on because it's measuring your blood sugar in the fluid underneath your skin, not in an actual bloodstream. So I'll do a finger stick, I'll see where I'm actually at, and then I will watch my blood sugars. And if it gets closer to that 70 milligrams per deciliter, I will treat. And then we have Dexcom tip number four, and that is if your Dexcom is acting completely up, request a replacement. So acting up can mean a lot of different things. It can be being very inaccurate. Maybe the sensor was a bleeder, so it bled a lot when you inserted it. It can be that it consistently requests you to do calibrations. It can be losing signal a lot, or it can be, it can fail completely so that you're no longer receiving any readings. In my experience, Dexcom is really good at replacing faulty sensors. You simply report the issue directly to Dexcom and they'll send a replacement directly to your door. If you live in the US like I do, you actually don't even have to call them. You can request a replacement directly through the Dexcom app. Um, I've done that for the last, I think, two years, and it, there hasn't been a problem. I haven't had to like talk to anyone. I simply just file in the complaint online. They send me a replacement directly to my door. And let's move on to the next tip. So you might have noticed that Dexcom is only approved to be worn in certain places. But tip number five is that you can actually wear it pretty much wherever you want below the neckline. If you live in the US, you've probably been told that the only place that you can wear the Dexcom is on your abdomen. It's a little different for children, so children two to 17, it's also proved to be worn on the upper buttocks. But that's per FDA approval, only stomach for adults. However, if you live outside the US, you've probably been told that, hey, well, you can wear it on the abdomen, but you can also wear it on the backside of your arm. And that is because Dexcom has CE marked for it to be worn on the arm. So if you're in the US and you choose to wear your Dexcom anywhere else and on your stomach, it's considered off-label. It being off-label also means that it's at your own risk. A lot of people really like the readings that they're getting from wearing the Dexcom on the back of their arm. I've worn it there a whole lot as well. I'm just giving my skin a bit of rest and right now it's actually on my stomach. However, I also like you know, wearing it on my thighs or on my upper buttocks. But you know, it basically comes down to where does it work best for you. Remember when I said um, don't always trust your Dexcom readings? Well, my next tip kind of falls in the same category, and that is be aware of compression lows. Compression lows are not actual low blood sugars, but it's situations, for example, when you're sleeping, where you put pressure on your CGM and it returns the favor by giving you a false low blood sugar alert. So that's a compression low. So for example, if your Dexcom wakes you up in the middle of the night with an urgent low, it's always a good idea to check with a finger stick or at least, you know, look at your graph and check that it's not a random drop. So let's say, for example, you've been coasting at 120 for hours and then all of a sudden, slam, it goes to 50. So basically your blood sugar line looks like that and then that. In that situation, I think it's fair to measure your blood sugars using a finger stick just to check that you're actually having a low blood sugar episode before reaching for a whole bunch of glucose. And my next Dexcom tip, which would be the seventh, is to adjust your alerts on your receiver or on the app. You can just change it on the one that you use the most frequently. You can actually adjust or turn off all the alerts on your Dexcom, all of them except for the urgent low alarm. I really recommend adjusting the alerts to suit you and your lifestyle. So basically having alarms going off for things that you're not going to do anything about is not really helpful, right? It'll probably just lead to irritation, uh, frustration with the system. You might 
end up not wanting to use the system altogether. For example, if you do not correct your blood sugars until they hit 180 milligrams per deciliter, there's not, probably no reason to have your high alerts set to 160. Or for example, if you only want to be alerted once when you're having a high blood sugars, then let's turn off the repeated alerts. Or, you know, you can set scheduled alerts so that it's alerts in a certain way during the nighttime, for example. I, for example, have a different alert schedule set for nighttime versus when I'm awake. That just makes more sense for me. So go in, adjust those settings so that they work for you. And the eighth Dexcom tip that I have for you today is to download your Dexcom reports from Clarity, from Gluco, or use other software. Download it and review it at least every few weeks. I really like using the Clarity software to see my Dexcom data. That is a free software that comes with Dexcom. So it's their reporting software. But let's say they use a Tandem, an Animus, or an Omnipod pump, for example, uh, together with your Dexcom. You might want to view both your blood sugar data as well as your insulin delivery data. So for that, I really recommend the Gluco app. Again, free software, like free. And that's a really easy way for up you to upload your data and view all of that information in one place. But regardless of which software you use to view your Dexcom data, it can be really helpful in pinpointing areas where you need to focus or just, you know, give you some insights into what's going on with your blood sugars. If you use Clarity and if you have trends in your blood sugars, it will even point that out for you. So for example, let's say that you have a pattern of low blood sugars overnight. That will be stated directly in the Clarity report. You can also sign up for weekly reports. I've done that with Clarity. And that means that on a weekly basis, I'll receive an email with the highlights of what's going on with my blood sugars. And now to my ninth Dexcom tip. And I have to point out, this is not FDA approved. It's not approved by anyone. It's very off label, but it's one of those tips that I've really used uh, in the past um, to simply have access to my Dexcom CDM. And that is to restart the Dexcom sensor. I've been in situations where I ran out of Dexcom sensors or the situation right now where my insurance has decided to no longer cover my Dexcom. Um, and in those situations, you know what? I restarted my sensor and got another 10 days out of it. Once the sensor stops after those 10 days that is approved for, I'll pop the transmitter out of the sensor, wait 30 to 60 minutes, pop it back in and restart it. And I'll usually get about, you know, another 10 days out of it. It's often a little bonkers for the first few hours, maybe even for the first 24 hours, but with some heavy calibration, you know, the sensor usually gets back in line and starts reporting my blood sugars accurately. I've seen others who um, get around the restart by pushing a little um, test strip in between the sensor and the transmitter, waiting that 30 to 60 minutes and then restarting the sensor. So basically don't pop out the transmitter. I haven't been able to do that with my test strips, but you know, you might want to try it out. It's not super easy to get the transmitter out of the sensor. So if you want to try it out, I recommend that you watch my video on how to restart the Dexcom sensor. And we have now finally arrived at my 10th Dexcom tip. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And this tip is how to get your Dexcom if your insurance won't cover it or if you don't have insurance at all. I had to figure out how to get my Dexcom without insurance this summer when my insurance suddenly decided to no longer cover my Dexcom. So yes, I am fighting that. I'm fighting it with my doctor, but the jury is still out on where that's gonna end. I'm not gonna lie, it's expensive. And you still need a prescription. But once you have that, I recommend that you use GoodRx if you're here in the US. And there you can look up the different places that you can pick up a Dexcom locally. And you can very easily, you know, compare prices. So as you can see here, these are the prices for a box of Dexcom. So that's three sensors a month use locally to where I live. And those were my top 10 Dexcom tips. So I hope you liked them. And as always, I'm going to ask you, what do you have to add? Do you have any Dexcom tips that you want to share with me and all the other viewers? You know, I really enjoy learning from you guys. If you like this video, please give it a like below. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, if you like my content and would like to see more from me, please 
go down below and subscribe. And remember to turn on notifications. That is that little bell. That way you'll be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching.